In this video, let's look at getting started using the LTT Torque Analyzer. Hi, my name is Dave and I'm a member of the marketing team here at Mounts. This is the LTT Torque Analyzer, a very versatile tool that can be used in the calibration lab, can be used out on the factory floor as a line tester to verify torque, can also be used in R&D to develop torque specification, as well as do joint analysis. Here's a quick clip of the LTT and some of our other torque products in action. In this video, we're gonna look at the basic operations, the different modes that are available with the LTT. We'll also take a look at the different accessories that are available. We'll look at how to navigate through the menu structure. We'll also touch on the tool test function. And finally, we'll take a look at the software for the LTT. Now, if we wanna look at the different ports that are on the outside of the LTT, on the top left is the power supply input. Now the LTT is battery operated, so the unit can be used with the power supply plugged in without any issue. If it is used with the battery, you can expect to get about 30 hours of use before it needs to be recharged. We also have an external sensor port so we can expand the range of the analyzer. We have a USB port as well where we connect to the software. We have the barcode scanner port. This helps us to be able to select tool tests very easily. We'll talk about that here coming up. The LTT comes with the ability to mount directly to a bench. There are four spring-loaded bolts to easily fasten this to a work surface. The LTT has six different modes of operation. Let's highlight three of those, peak, first peak, and track. Peak torque registers the highest torque applied, and this is useful for calibrating and testing of hand tools as well as power tools. First peak mode displays the value of the first detectable peak. This is useful for calibrating and testing click wrenches. The LTT captures the point at where the wrench clicks. Track mode constantly displays any increasing or decreasing torque variations that are applied to the sensor. So very similar to a scale, as you apply load to it, it's going to show you that value. As that load is decreased, it will show you that value as well. This is useful for calibrating dial style wrenches. There are a number of accessories available for the LTT. We have a bracket that can mount to a bench and that can put the analyzer into a vertical orientation. If we need to expand the range of the analyzer, we can do that by adding additional sensors. If we're going to be doing some testing on power tools, we wanna to make sure we're using a rundown adapter with any reaction style transducers. We can also add a hex step adapter if we're doing any open end breakover style wrenches. And then we can also add a multiplexer, which basically allows us to plug in four additional transducers into the LTT. And we can also use a barcode scanner to help pull up a certain tool test. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into the demo portion where we can look at some more features of the LTT. The unit I have here is the LTT50i. It has a 50 
inch capacity internal transducer. And we have a number of tools that we can go ahead and test. I have a couple different style of torque wrenches. I have a torque screwdriver. I have one external transducer, a rundown adapter, the barcode scanner, and I also have an electric clutch tool. So let's go ahead and power the unit on. To do that, it's really easy. All we really need to do is hold and press down any of the soft keys here. And the unit will boot up. It's going to tell us what version we're using, what the internal sensor is, and then we have our standard operation screen. So what the screen is indicating up here in the left is going to be the mode that we're using it in. Currently we're in the peak mode. Next, it's telling us which sensor we are using. It's set right now to the internal transducer. We have our filter setting. We also have our unit of measurement. We have our soft keys on the top up here. And then we have our tolerance lights here, red and green. So for us to be able to start testing, there are basically three things that we need to know. We need to know the testing mode that we're going to be in, the unit of measurement we want to use, and how we want to clear the values once a reading has been taken. And to do that, we just simply hit the soft key underneath the menu, and this is going to open up the selections that we have. Now, once we make a selection here, the menu will expand, and then we'll have additional choices to finally make our selection. So in this case, we need to determine what our testing mode is going to be. So if we go into mode, so we just scroll down using the arrow keys, press enter, and now it's revealed the different modes that we have. So we have track, we have peak, first peak, and then we have our other three auditing modes. So uh, in this case, we are going to be staying in the peak mode for this particular test. So we can just leave it there. We can hit return here and then back to the menu button and we are back out. Let's say we want to this test to be done in Newton meters. So we can hit our menu button. We can scroll to units, press enter, and then we can scroll all the way down to Newton meters. Now we can keep going in some cases But let's jump back up to Newton meters and select that. And we can come back out, exit out. And now the analyzer is telling us we're in peak mode. We're using the internal transducer and we are set in Newton meters. So next, how are we going to clear the results? So I have a torque uh, screwdriver here. And if I go ahead and put this into the transducer and I go ahead and take a reading you can see that our peak torque is 1.3 Newton meters so this value is going to remain on the screen until I press the center button to clear it now if we want to have this automatically clear for us we can set that we can come into menu and come down to setup And then this is where we can set a number of different items, such as the tolerance, which affects the go or no go light. We also have the ability to set the auto clear function. So I can scroll down, select auto clear. And currently right now it's in manual mode. If I press up on the arrow, you can see it's now set to automatically clear. And it's now set at one second. And I can set that to as many as five seconds. But let's just set it for two seconds. And now when I take a reading, the unit will automatically clear. So those would be the basic settings to get started using the LTT.
Now let's go ahead and take a look at how some of the other modes function. So if we come into our peak mode and we come into mode, If we come into our menu and we select mode, we can go ahead and select track. And now you can see that as I apply load to the, the transducer, we are getting a value. However much load I put onto the transducer, that's the value that we're getting without any Torque, obviously we're getting zeros. If I go the other direction counterclockwise, you can see I'll get a negative number. And so that's how the, the track mode works. Now, let's take a look at the first peak mode. Now, first peak mode is used to calibrate and check click style wrenches. And what happens with a click wrench, as the wrench is being pulled and we get the click, we have about three degrees before we start adding additional torque to the wrench. So, that click is picked up by the analyzer. Uh, and then it also shows us if there was any additional over torque that happens as well. So get the click, and then we also get additional over torque if there is any. So let's go ahead and run this and we'll see that. So we are getting about three and a half newton meters on the click, but you can see the additional over torque that we are getting ranges from about 4.7, excuse me, about 4.7 up to five newton meters, well above the target. So now let's go ahead and do the testing with the electronic clutch tool. So for that, let's go ahead and put our, put the unit back into the peak mode. We'll go ahead and grab our rundown adapter. Now the rundown adapter allows the tool to get up to its RPM allows the tool to get up to its running RPM and then clutch out and give us our torque value. I've got the electric tool. I can just put it into the rundown adapter. And so that's how we can use the system with a joint simulator and a rundown adapter to do our electronic clutch and pneumatic tools, as well as hydraulic pulse tools. The only tool that we don't want to put on here is going to be an impact tool because there's no torque control and that would certainly damage the sensor. All right. So the last thing that we can do here is go ahead and use the external uh, sensor. And if we look back at the uh, sensor here, it is plugged into the unit on the external sensor port. Currently, we are using the internal transducer for us to be able to select the external we just come down to sensor, select external. 
And now we're reading from the uh, external transducer. Now, what you're seeing here is the sensor is the calibration for that sensor has expired. That's because we build in the calibration data into each sensor. So there is the automatic recognition chip. So if a sensor is out of calibration, it can still function. Um, however, it will need to be sent in for calibration. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the tool tests. Now, the unit itself can store up to 5,000 readings at one time, and that's done through our tool test function. And the tool test function gives us the ability to um, have a certain tool within the database of the analyzer, and we can pull up that tool, uh, and we would have all of the parameters set to be able to go ahead and simply test that tool. So to set up the tool test, we do that in the software. So let's go ahead and boot up the computer. We'll uh, hook up the software. We'll go ahead and set up a tool test. Okay, now that we're here in the software, we're gonna take a look at two tabs here, the tool tests, and then we'll touch on data logging at the end. Okay, with the tool tests, we can go ahead and put in a test name. This could be either the tool or it could be a range. We want to put in the sensor model. We can just hit read, that'll pull it from the analyzer. Next is the tool serial number. Now this is an alphanumeric number that we can go ahead and scan with the barcode. Next, we're going to have to select our mode with peak, our unit of measurement in newton meters, our filter setting at 500. Then we'll go ahead and set our tolerances. Then we'll have our clearing function be set up to automatic. And let's clear it for two seconds. And we want to test clockwise only for five data points. All right, then we can go ahead and click save. And we can give the file name for that test. And we'll call this video demo tool test. All right, now that that's saved, we can go ahead and we can then send test to the meter. So we click send, we can grab a number of tests that we've already created, but let's just use the one we just did. And now that's been sent. Now that we've sent our test to the analyzer, let's go ahead and run that test. Now, there are a couple different ways we can do that. We can do it directly on the analyzer itself, or we can use the barcode scanner. Let's first go ahead and do it on the analyzer. So now what I want you to take a look at is that we are in track mode here and we are in inch pounds. Now the test that we set up is set up for peak mode and it's also set up in newton meters. So when we automatically pull this test up, it's going to change those parameters for us automatically. Now to get to the test, let's go ahead and press the soft key here under tool tests. And we can hit select. And now we have the ability to look for the test that we created. So uh, in this case, we can see that it is the very first test within the list of tests that are on the analyzer itself. And all we need to do is go ahead and select this. And it has now put the test name here. Then 
the last thing we need to do is just go ahead and start this. And now you'll notice we have an extra digit on the end here. That is telling us how many readings we have taken. So let's go ahead and begin. We are in peak mode. We're now switched to Newton meters. And let's go ahead and test the tool. And when we did put in the tolerance settings for this particular test, that also changed the function key, or excuse me, that also changed the light indication here. So as long as we get a green light, we are within the tolerance. Okay, now the unit has gone clear. That means that the test is now over. Now we do still see the name here. Um, that will remain until uh, we do another test or the power uh, for the unit goes to sleep. And that's how we can select the test on the display. Now let's go ahead and use the barcode scanner to do it. So again, we can come in here, select our tool test. And what happens is you'll hear the barcode scanner power up. And now we can go ahead and use the barcode scanner to scan a barcode. And now that test has been pulled up. It's all ready to start. We can see our counting digit here. And let's go ahead and run this one. Okay, and that's how we can do the tool test. Now, we could set these uh, tests up for as many tools that you may have or that you may want to do testing like this for. Now, the LTT can store 50 tests at one time, but you can load multiple tests. You can then uh, go back and remove tests from here, but we can store up to 5,000 readings of the tests on the LTT before it needs to be downloaded. So at this point, we are ready to go. We can hook the computer back up and go ahead and download these results. Okay, now that we're back in the system, we can go ahead and click download results. Now the box next to it that says required comments, when we have that checked for every test that is being downloaded, the system will ask us to put a comment in. If we don't check that, then the system will just pull all the data in. So we can go ahead and select where we're going to put this. and select OK. And now we're gonna get the results from the testing. And if for our comments, if we wanted to put test passed or no adjustments needed, And this was for the two tests we just did. So now that information has been saved and we can go in and take a look at the readings. Okay, and then once we navigate to where the tests have been placed, you can see that they are a CSV file, but 
Microsoft has gotten those. So there is the data from the tests. We have the time, date, the stamp, the number of data points, the comments, and the readings. And this would be the same for both tests. And lastly, let's go ahead and take a look at the data logging tab. This gives us the ability to do a graphic rundown a graphic rundown of the fastener or the tool that we might be testing. So we just hit start and we can go ahead and then take our data. And as the tool cams and clutches, we get our data. So this can be very helpful if we're doing some joint analysis. We want to see what's happening with the joint specifically or with the tool, we can use some of the tools to enlarge it, to get a better look at the values. We can save these images and we can review them later. So the data logging tab can be very, very helpful. If you need more information on the LTT, you can download the manual and some other support material from our website. You can get there by either shop products, torque analyzers, LTT, and select a model, scroll down, and here is the data sheet, the manual, and the drawing. And all of the information regarding the analyzer.